today I have the distinct pleasure of speaking with Marty Weems from American Rare Earths. How are you today? Hey, doing great, Tracy. So good to see you again. You've got the perfect name, America and Rare Earths, okay? So, and I see today your stock is moving rapidly. It's up over 25% in the OTCQB. Yeah. What's going on, Marty? Why, why is everyone paying attention to American Rare Earths? Well, you know, we've not been immune to some of the, the market headwinds that have impacted everyone across the board. Um, but through that, you know, as, as the market has stabilized, we have continuously put out, uh, you know, positive news flow around all the wins we've, we've been able to achieve over the last several months. Um, and, you know, we consistently say what we're going to do and do what we're going to say. Uh, and that shows over and over again with some really exciting projects. So, you know, we just keep our head down, keep producing, keep delivering results, uh, and the stock price will take care of itself. Well, and speaking speaking to the milestones you've been achieving, I think I counted seven news releases since the beginning of June. And let's start with the assay results from Halleck Creek. Those seemed very impressive for me. Let's talk about those highlights. Yeah, so we, we chatted about those a little bit. Um, last time we spoke, and we've we've come with some additional news on those uh, more drill results, um, you know, and 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 I'd love to talk about those. I'm you know since we last spoke, I think when we spoke last. Kind of the big news was our teaming for rare earths processing R and D in a consortium led by Lawrence Livermore National Lab. Uh, the consortium's been approved to receive uh, up to 13 million dollars to develop scalable bio-based separation and purification of rare earth elements. Their, their goal is a modest pilot plant with the, this disruptive technology to produce a, a, a finished product of multiple high purity, discrete oxides are comparable, thus a, a sellable product. Um, so we're the, the sole industrial team member there. Uh, but to your question, and you know, we had also, when we spoke last, just uh, started reporting some initial results, uh, outstanding assay results from that maiden drilling at the Hallett Creek Rare Earth Project in Wyoming. Uh, Hallett Creek's one of our two flagship U.S. located rare earth projects uh, that both look to be extraordinarily large and unique in their extremely low penalty element content. We've since reported more results from that Diamond Core drilling campaign. So, so the news to share today along that line is that the mating, maiden drilling results um, there are some of those are as high as 11,981 parts per million total rare earth content. And uh, the grades appear very consistent to depths exceeding 100 meters. So we're, we're not talking about a few little uh, high grade veins of rare earths. We're, we're talking exceptional thickness, uh, open, uh, it's uh, exposed at surface and really consistent to depths exceeding 100 meters. So the majority of the drill holes uh, average over 4,100 parts per million uh, total rare earth content, uh, rare earth oxides, uh, over more than 90 meters of mineralized thickness uh, in, in average across those holes. Um, the, so the project remains open at depth and laterally, and that's especially exciting considering we now have over 24 square kilometers of claim control at Hallett Creek. Uh, that's a big jump from, uh, you know, less than 100 acres when we started this just over a year ago. So across that massive surface package, we've just reported more exciting surface assay results in the project area uh, from claims we added just east of that drilling area we've been talking about. So those new surface results lead us to believe the, the opportunity of a maiden resource at Hallett Creek is much greater than we originally estimated in our published exploration target. So we will soon publish an updated JORC compliant exploration target for Hallett Creek to give the market an idea of what we mean when we say this project has the potential to be the largest rare earth JORC resource and development in the USA, maybe the largest in the Western Hemisphere. Okay, so we were basically discussing how your assay results from your news release just last week about how yep. these new claim areas are going to show significant upside. And, and, and that's what you basically talked us through, correct? Yeah. That's right. Yeah, right on target.
Okay. Now, in addition to that, I'd like to just take you back a little bit for an update on your, uh, you teamed up with the defense R&D. Okay. Yeah. Uh, give us an update on that. And does this, this is your, your deal with the Critical Materials Institute. Is that correct? Yeah. So uh, I, I love how you've asked the question because you've just highlighted a bit of confusion we're trying to clear up in the market. So it, actually we have uh, currently two R&D projects that are, that are funded by government R&D funding. One is through the Critical Materials Institute, which is a DOE innovation hub using DOE money. So we have a, a consortium there that was funded back in January to do some R&D work on uh, rare earths uh, extraction and separation. Now, in addition to that, and separately, this consortium working under the DARPA Ember project, also funded by DOD money, uh, uh, separately uh, funded by DOD money, different from Department of Energy money uh, on the CMI project, the DARPA Ember project uh, that consortium is the one I mentioned with Lawrence Livermore National Lab, uh, funding up to $13 million to, to bring forward a, a scale uh, pilot plant uh, in separation, uh, uh, extraction and separation pr to produce high purity product. You've touched on your technology advancements. Maybe this is an opportunity as well to help new investors to American Rare Earths understand where you are in that particular food chain. Yeah, so uh, we'd love to do that, you know, and, and we say, um, you know, when we talk about what are the core, you know, the core values of or value components, value proposition of American Rare Earths, it really comes down to our, our assets, the projects, uh, which are uniquely low in, in penalty elements, the team, you know, really great people doing great work, and then these partnerships. These partnerships are, are an exceptional component of, of what we bring to the table. We've been working hard on these and developing partnerships across uh, extraction, separation, purification, metallization technologies. And to, to be able to get permitted and operationalized and take advantage of the hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars uh, of government funding that's coming to bear in the United States, um, you know, to be a part of these disruptive new technology stacks is absolutely critical, we believe, both in terms of the technology and personnel. You know, I, I think, you know, uh, Jack often talks about the, uh, you know, just the, the desert that we are in, in terms of human capital talent uh, in this supply chain. And we see a core, a core place for us to develop that talent is in our partnerships with the national laboratories and with the major research one universities that are working in this space. Ah, Desert of Human Capital from Jack Lipton. I have an interview with him later this afternoon. I thank you for reminding me of yet another <laughs> point that Jack has perhaps made along the way with me, Marty, that I yeah. may have missed. Now, American Rare Earths does not have a desert for human capital. Well, you recently announced, I believe, a retirement for one of your board members. I have been astounded by the depth of talent in your group uh, that has been brought to our attention by a global expert on ESG and critical uh, minerals. She could be on any board in the world. Mel Sanderson has been drawing attention to your management team for us. How about yeah. we take a moment just to talk about why ARR should be a company anyone following this space should indeed be watching? Yeah. So as I said, it's, it's uh, the assets, the team, the partnership. So at the team level, that really starts with the board. We just have a fantastic board that's been, had a lot of foresight in this space to see the, the value in developing uh, rare earths and critical mineral projects in the United States uh, to, to serve that supply chain and take advantage of non-dilutive funding activities or, or opportunities brought forth by government R&D programs, uh, especially in that midstream uh, processing separation purification space. Um, so, you know, a, a great example of that, as you, met, as you mentioned, is uh, board member Mel Sanderson, international diplomat, uh, 20 years of the U.S. State Department, another 14 years working for one of the biggest mining companies on the planet in Freeport McMoran doing government operations. She's been all over the world, brings extraordinary insights um, both from a mining perspective as well as from a uh, ESG perspective, you know, and not just greenwashing, 
but genuine ESG insights that helps our board see where we're, where the future is going to be relative to being ESG compliant. You know, so in the words of, of the great Gretzky, skate to where the puck's going to be, you know, that's not just in terms of the market. That's also understanding where's the ESG and regulatory space potentially going to be and in, in being uh, prepared to uh, manage in that space. So there are a lot of companies entering this space right now. A lot of big announcements, a lot of media attention. You've been around for a while and you have uh, not only management with depth of experience, but depth of experience in this, in this particular sector. Can you tell us why investors should look at American Rare Earths and give us your top three reasons, if you wouldn't mind? Yeah, I mean, consistently, it's all about the assets that are especially because they are uh, low in penalty elements and have a better opportunity of, of uh you know, getting through the permitting landscape of the United States because of the extraordinarily low uranium and thorium content. Um, and then the team, you know, we have a great team both at the board level and the, and the front line uh, technical team that just continues to deliver fantastic data and help us de-risk these projects. And then uh, these partnerships that we've talked so much about today, our partnerships with the national laboratories and the major research one universities really put us in a unique position to bring forth a, a, a disruptive tech stack in, in extraction, in separation, in purification, metallization. You know, that is a, a really old technology uh, reality in this industry that's ripe for disruption. And the U.S. government is bringing the money to bear uh, to make that possible. At, you know, not just on bench stuff in a lab, but bringing forth pilot plants, demonstration plants, and operationalizing at industrial scale. Well, you've heard it here at Investor Intel. And if you'd like more information on American Rare Earths, please go to their website or send us a note. We'll get it right over to Marty. Marty, thank you so much for joining us today. Yeah, thank you, Tracy. Good to see you.